dear president of the English Successful, dear Marina, um, dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the invitation for this uh, conference. Um, and when, when I received the request to give a speech here in honor of Sibin Koshak, my longtime colleague and friend, I was very pleased and accepted immediately. I was expecting a speech in the usual conference length, but I found then, and during the on time, time when, as time went on, it turned out that I was to give the main speech in keynote address. Um, and when I looked into the schedule and found that there's a, a, it, it set an hour, I became a little bit nervous. But then I was told it's uh, that also including the time for the discussion. So I hope I will not speak too long. Uh, now and uh, we are f we are facing changes which we cannot yet assess exactly. So maybe there is some reason to talk about and discuss. But these changes, uh, Silvin Koshak would certainly have found very exciting, as he was was always enthusiastic about new and the new and the different. And the funny thing is also. He didn't like new technologies, but he used it. And uh, uh, he didn't like bureaucracy, but became, he became the, the biggest bureaucrat of the Hittite uh, text, and we have to thank him for that. And he did it uh, twice, in a way, because he first did it on uh, the old paper, and then later he digitized everything. In the 1980s, uh, no, I, want to, I wanted to take the opportunity uh, to look back and reflect on the change of the world, of the, uh, the working world, uh, and how it has changed over the last 40 years, in which I myself have been active, um, it, and which is also the most relevant period for our consideration of the uh, development of Hittitology in a technical sense. In the 1980s, of course, we already had a very turbulent century of development in Hittitology behind us, with brilliant scholars who shaped this discipline. It's not without danger to mention some of them here, as others are easily forgotten in an unjustified way. The pioneering period included persons like Hans Gustav Güterbock, Emil Erwerzig Getorix Forer, Heinrich Otten, Hans Ehrlolf, Johannes Friedrich, Albrecht Götze and many others which I cannot all account for here. Some things about the Hittites had been known for a long time, but research only really took off after the discovery of, uh, discovery of large clay tablet archives in the former capital of Hattusa, which began with the excavations between 1905 and 1912 before the First World War in Hattusa, about 200 kilometers uh, east of Ankara in Anatolia, by Theodor Macridi and Hugo Winkler. In the interwar period, Kurt Bittel excavated there from 1930 to 1939, and after the Second World War, he continued with the German Archaeological Institute from nine, uh, 1952, and later under the direction of uh, Peter Nebel, Jürgen Seher, and now Andreas Schachner, until today. So over 100 years of excavation. To date, around 30,000 clay tablets and fragments have been discovered there. Already during the First World War, Bedrich or Friedrich Rosny, who was then working as a librarian at the Vienna uh, University Library, discovered that one incomprehensible language, Hittite, is an, uh, the, the one incomprehensible Hittite in these texts is an Indo-European language, the oldest surviving Indo-European language, whose decipherment not only significantly expanded our knowledge of ancient Anatolia, but also strongly influenced Indo-European linguistics in its reconstruction of the Indo-European total language. In addition, the cuneiform tablets from Hattusa brought to light a number of other languages related to Indo-European language family, such as Palaic and Luvian language, and the pre-Indo-European Hattian language. 
The archives in Borske, now Borske Hatusa, and the old name is Hatusa, also contain material in Hurrian, a language from an isolated language group that is relative, uh, related only to Urartian, which is native to the eastern Anatolian Lake Van, which was widespread in North, the uh, Hurrian was widespread in uh, northern Mesopotamia, especially in the second millennium BC. Until the discovery of the Hurrian Hittite bilinguals in Hattusa, the most important document of this language was a letter from Mitanni King Toshata from the diplomatic archive of the Pharaohs in Amarna in Egypt. So this shows the interconnections and the importance. Um, in addition, of course, there are texts indicated in Sumerian, the previously known original cuneiform languages, so to say, original cuneiform languages in Mesopotamia. And Hattusa is always good for a surprise. Perhaps you have read in the press a new language has been discovered this year in uh, the language of Kalashma. I will not take and say anything more. Uh, uh, Professor Schwema knows better because he's working on the text and his colleagues trying to decipher the, or to un interpret the language. It's deciphered, it's written in Kalashma. The main sites. You see here a selection of fragments in different sizes, colors, and scripts. Uh, the main uh, sites within the most uh, within the most important site of Hittite text are the area of the Great Temple, where the biggest finds were. Can you see this on the screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, um, the house on the slope it must be somewhere here. And then the citadel, the Buikale, the big uh, um, fortress, and then, which is here behind my sticker, uh, somewhere here, I can't show, see it exactly on my screen, uh, somewhere here in the, uh, in the upper city, the area of the temples. With, uh, there were numerous temples. The most productive excavation years were the first years for which excavation were carried out. Uh, above all in the big temple and the palace hill, and in the mid-thirties, the mid-nineteen-thirties. Since then, numerous but often particularly fragmented clay tablets have been found, and in Mesopotamia, with this dry climate, clay tablets can actually be found everywhere. In Anatolia, however, the chances of survival for, uh, um, for clay tablets are somewhat lower because the climate is much harsher and the natural and the, the, this is a plateau which is very high but 10,000 uh, no, sorry thousand meters uh, with harsh winters imagine you are a young and juicy tablet not fired it means not not uh, uh, not um, uh, baked and you, you would live for 3,000 years in the soil of Anatolia possibly frozen through several times in the winter. The soil that often forms cracks, and as a frozen component of the soil, the clay tablet is also torn apart, which leads to its dissolution over a thousand times and the thousand, three thousand years, if it is made of poor, unfired clay. Therefore, uh, we, have, we have preserved clay tablets that were fired in conflagration. It is in the fire in the temple or in the palace. Above all these fires have sometimes developed such a strong, developed such a strong heat uh, that the clay tablets were deformed. The surface for, uh, had bubbles and many tablets have also burst in the fire, virtually burst. When the structures in which the uh, tablets were stored, collapsed. Many of these tablets, or the most, broke in many small pieces. Depending on how strongly they were fired, it is how close they were to the source of the fire, their color also varies, which is why color plays a subordinate rule, a role in finding joints of related fragments. When the structures in which they were, they, they were stored collapse, uh, sorry, there are no, now a number of other sites, but Hattusa remains by far the most important site for Italian cuneiform tablets. Not only because it has produced the most clay tablets, but also because a large portion of them have been published, and we 
owe this to the diligent work of our colleagues in the analogous past. Analogous, not the past millennium. Let's recall the state of technology in the 80s, just to see what changed and how far we go. Sometimes you get emails that this is not working, that is not working, why do we not have, and we do we not have this and that? But look back what advantages we made. Ah oh, yes, we went to the internet in the 90s. Remember this noise? Each time you were checking the emails, you had this nice noise, but I wasn't sure if it works. <laughs> yes, and you should uh, switch it off quickly because otherwise you pay just for staying in the internet. And the prices were good at this time. It was in, before in the 60s, in 69, the, the, the mankind first time went to the moon. At that time, what kind of communication did we have? We had telephones, a disk kind, and recently in a, in a, a museum of technology, I observed two school children, first grade, who were thinking about how to use this nice telephone here with this, um, with this ring. How, how, it has no, um, no uh, way to, to, no buttons to press. <laughs> Um, this reminds you to, to that uh, situation when sometimes younger people think, oh, this old chap is unable to use this new device. It's all, I think it's all a question of acculturation. You must get used to it and grow into it. Um, the usual the way of communication in the 80s was to write a letter. Back then it was still done in form of a polite long letter with Dear Professor, may I ask you a few things about, uh, I, I, uh, I would like to know your opinion and so on, something like this. Nowadays that happens uh, frequently that students write, Hello Professor, can you send me the digital version of this and that? Or can you distill this or that from the data? We don't want to talk about the forms of the address <laughs> sometimes. Also but I'm just describing, I'm not complaining. Times change. Alright, internet we had in 1990, about beginning. And I remember um, an event where my boss at that time, Professor Karl Hecker in Münster, who was working with old Ethereum tablets, sent me to find out what it is. Something like internets, as he said. So the German <laughs> internets, and they they had something with links. So I went and saw the first versions of HTML, the common no common uh, language for the internet. Everybody knows to use at least. You just click on something, and something happens. And I remember when I came back, I was uh, amazed of this new. Uh, developments and new possibilities, but I was also a bit concerned because I was asking myself, who will put all these links into the texts? Okay, um, I learned that uh, this is something you can program and it's done automatically. Yeah, and email, email also came in the, you need first the internet and then you can start with emails. But that was also going quickly. In the 90s, you still wrote the polite letters, you had to, everybody expected it, and uh, avoided the short forms, hi, and so. Um, but uh, it, it also brought a very uh, quick uh, speeding of the communication. Uh, the good thing is you could send something quickly and mostly you get a quick answer but on the other hand it put uh, the pressure on you to answer quickly. However, the hardware of this time was still the old typewriter. Um, an invention of the 19th century by the way, also the second millennium. And then later on we had uh, the, the electronic typewriter. And there you had these uh, ball heads where, which you could change and you could uh, let you make some with uh, the signs you needed. That was a progress. But you still put it on paper. Nothing digital, not reusable, you print it out, finished. In the 
about 1980, there came there was a little company uh, owned by one one of the person was somebody named Bill Gates. No, no, not Bill Gates. Uh, the other one. Uh, the, yeah, Steve Jobs. Uh, he, had, he, he rented a garage and he, he built a little computer and the second version was very successful, Apple IIe. Uh, you see it here on the left side. Uh, and they forced and later uh, the uh, IBM, by the success, uh, to construct the one on the right side, which is the PC. The, the PC. What we ever been using at that time. It had two floppy disks, so five and a quarter inch floppy disks, you can bend them. And uh, I don't know how many of you in the room have any idea how much page, how many pages you could put, put on the disk there. It was 64,000 letters, I mean bytes, yeah, Let, uh, letters. There's about 30, 40 pages at maximum. Then you have to take it out, take the next one. So a big book on one disk was impossible. And uh, you have, you can see here two slots. You can put in two of these, but not for more data, no. On the second, there were the programs. And uh, the, the, the uh, RAM, the, for work, the, the, the brain of the computer, so to say, was not much bigger. So it was quite the hard of work. And uh, you see the screen here on the right side is, is uh, green. So you see, it's all standard letters. Only after a while we had uh, new developments with graphics. And then we could, um, like as you can see here, uh, on the downside, this is a program which was then on an Atari computer, and it allowed you to produce your own uh, fonts and have something uh, like graphic fonts. And you could use your whatever you used, and first some people did it for Japanese or whatever. It was. It was fantastic, but still it was hard. And uh, my first programming language, for, uh, by the way, I learned not on the keyboard, but with these cards. Um, you, you make a mistype and you start from scratch again. Um, and you need many of these cards until it's finished. So it was harder times than today. So just be grateful to the advancement of technology. Some people are uh, um, a bit... Uh, a bit, um, yeah, I say nowadays technology, you know, are not so technology affine, appreciate it. Another problem we had, um, for instance, when you received a letter from a colleague in Russia, you could only half, you could only read half of it because the, the uh, code pages uh, were doubled. You used to put it on one or the other, and he sent it, of course, in his Russian uh, coding, and you then got something mixed. Or, or, or other things. So it was not so easy. And this only changed after about 2000. Uh, the the, the, the um, um, Unicode uh, it was developed, and then we could also we have uh, codes for all our uh, um, signs and characters. It took some time, but it came. Uh, and there were many, there were many problems with the, with the programs, but uh, it was an advantage. Now everything is internationalized and exchangeable. It was already mentioned, Zivi Koshak um, spent some time studying in the 60s, late 60s, with, um, uh, with um, Heinrich Otten in Marburg. And I think it's a, not, it's a quite decisive time also for the Hittidul e portal because he got to know Heinrich Otten, and Heinrich Otten got to know him. And Heinrich Otten was very much impressed from the, from the seminar they had together, which he also writes in one of his publications, uh, the Sprachliche Stellung Datierung der Madhubata Texts. And at the same time, uh, he, uh, Sylvie Koschak, published together with his uh, friend Aharon Kempinski, uh, a similar uh, research uh, about the Ishmerika Vertrag. So this was one of the um, incident or the 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 the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the crossroads where uh, the, the basis were made possible of the development. Okay, but Sylvain Koshak then went to Oxford 
and later he, hired, he was hired in Chicago. This is the Oriental Institute of Chicago from outside, long time ago. And uh, I must say, I'm a bit sad, it doesn't exist anymore, really. I mean, the building is still there, and people are working there, but the name Oriental Institute was replaced by some modern, because Oriental is a bad word. Okay, I, I, here is um, Sibin Koshak on the right side, in probably 19... 82, with uh, his colleagues Howard Berman on the left, and in the middle you see, without beard, uh, uh, Hans Gustav Güterbock, the doyen of one, yeah, of uh, of the American uh, um, Hittitology, and uh, on his left side with the moustache, this is Harry Hofner who led the um, the Hittite Chicago Hittite Dictionary. Uh, for all the years and hired the city. This was, uh, I forgot one thing in the, in before, um, with the, the dating of text became one of the main topics of uh, Silvin's work and that what he liked most, looking at every tablet and giving it a date. Okay, so he, he learned to work with uh, to, to write dictionaries, and he was uh, um, responsible for writing uh, the drafts of the uh, of uh, the uh, letters. Is L P? Maybe it's an M M and N. L and P. Yes, I lost my 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 pages. I. I will now speak uh, as, well, as I remember. <laughs> um, yes. It's a N -N 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 mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, also uh, Harry Hofner writes that uh, he, uh, Sidney Koshak was, who had worked about uh, um, uh, the, uh, these uh, metal texts, that he was yeah, he was uh, he was very good in finding uh, interpretations of rarely uh, attested words, which was uh, uh, which gave them a two days, a two years advance uh, on on their plan. But um, Sidney Kosha was always this little green thing here. I don't know how to get rid of it, but. Also kleiner Pfeil oben auf dem grünen Ding. Da, das da, das da, drüber. Das, das war. Genau. Das war. Ah, okay. Das war ein Stück. Ups. Aber da wird das nicht. Noch mal klicken und dann ist wieder auf der. Ah ja, okay, genau. Ja. Um, and yeah, what technology did they use at that time? Um, actually, they made file cards. And uh, uh, Berman was uh, Howard Berman was writing all the translations on little file cards, which were then uh, copied by Richard Beal, he's the, the young man with the beard, uh, the third from left. Um, he was at that time, I think, still a student, and uh, then they, you know, then they could make the different uh, uh, lemma to 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 uh, bring put them into the different lemmata. So it was the, the old-fashioned way to make cards. We were already in the Xerox time uh, uh, age, where you could make such copies. Some of these copies were a bit uh, greasy, maybe you remember, and then they stick together after some years. <laughs> you can't read anything because it's only on the, on the other page. <laughs> but at least, yeah. All right, and this, uh, Richard B. told me that they used uh, this equipment at that time. And now it's a pity that I cannot read because I want to cite what he told me. Maybe you can move the box thing somewhere. Yeah. Okay, so uh, it was uh, also some kind of uh, clone of a PC or something. TRS, it was some, 
some store for consumer goods, but Harry Hofner was very fond of these new technologies. So they had these TRS-80 Model 3, I think it was Model 3 from the time, uh, to type in things for the manuscripts. And then they were printed with these nice printers. It was called Radio Shack DMP printer. And then they used, they used to say, when you are finished with your trash, you dump it. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you have seen this, sometimes you find it in shops, there are lots of needles who scratch over the paper. <coughs> okay, I can't do it, but, but you remember, uh, you should not uh, print too long text, it's <laughs> really uh, a hell, hellish noise. Yeah. Alright, but at least um, you had something digitized, but it, you went back with the, with the file cards. It's again not working. Because I moved this. Okay. Yeah. And we are in the, in the 80s. Sibin Koshak was not ready to settle yet. It's not his. It was not his uh, thing. So he left already uh, in 1985. They were quite. I think so. And uh, they were quite sad there uh, in, in, in Chicago. And as you can see, he decided to go for a year to China. Uh, to the Changchung, to Changchung, to the Institute of Ancient Civilization, became the first one to teach Hittite in China. He met uh, then also uh, his uh, wife there and returned happily to Mainz, to Heinrich Otten, who had uh, given him the job. And he accepted this job at the uh, academy only under the condition that he is allowed to go for a year to China, because he already had, had uh, uh, made the contract to come. And it was an adventure. Um, Heinrich Otten gave him basically uh, the task to look after the file cards. So he had the file cards again. This is one, I think it's really written by, if I didn't pick the wrong one, it's really, really written by Sylvain Koshak at the time. And uh, um, that's it. And we, there were coming new texts. And apart from that, he was free in doing whatever research he wanted. And he came back to, the, to his old question of dating the text. And he would always said, I would like to know how many texts there really were in Hatusha. Because it's so scattered. We have, at this time, we didn't have so many published, but at least 25,000 pieces. And uh, he was calculating, maybe at the end, when he, get it, when he put them all together, it might be maybe three to five thousand. Okay, I'm not so sure. Maybe uh, we have, in many cases, only something left of, of a big piece, and uh, we'll never find the other uh, pieces because they were completely destroyed. And he started working with the file cards and compiling uh, the information about uh, the single uh, fragments. And so he worked through a, and started the Conquer Dance, uh, making four volumes um, uh, of the, of the, the, with all the reference. We'll see this uh, in a moment, what, what is contained. But then he found out the big problem he uh, describes is that in, you print in, in volume B something, and then there is a join, um, and then you, maybe you can find the difference between the two. The left one is a photograph out of the book, printed book, and the right one is from the online uh, um, um, sketch. With here, 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 here is, is some join. So it's already in there and printed, so he has to give a new name to it. That was a big disadvantage, it was a big a kind of a mess coming up. Then, in, uh, after the early death, unfortunately, of Erich Neu, who was after uh, the retirement of Heinrich Otten uh, leading this uh, project at the Academy, um, Gernot Wilhelm came into play. And he was thinking about new ways of organizing uh, the, uh, the field. At the same time, we had the first uh, um, um, developments of digital 
humanities at the academy in other fields and these uh, members of the academy exchanged on that and there was the opportunity to build a little program uh, to enter, to, to make a database basically, to enter the texts and uh, be, be able to change it quickly. So this was a static thing. It's a nice program written in Tickle, Tickle TK, one of these famous um, programming languages. Probably nobody, have, more, probably nobody has heard of you. It was developed in the late 80s and even uh, able to handle uh, Unicode at some date. Um, and uh, yes, now it was very good for making, for instance, CDs, the, 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 the fonts of, on CDs and all of this, but not so good directly for internet web pages. All right. Um, Sidney Koshak started in 2000, late 2000 uh, with the program and the latest version I found, which was done by this group of the Academy, was 2001. And then he worked with it and entered uh, uh, all the fragment numbers. And uh, he really worked hard with that because when I came to the Academy, after Gernot William asked me if I could imagine to build up something on the internet, he had already entered uh, a, a great deal of the, uh, of the fragments. And uh, now, the program, had, the program had some problems. For instance, we have, you know, we have this, we, you can see in the one before, there is uh, the, the one A. And uh, the, the, the excavators had the funny idea, I go to the excavation, I find pieces and they number them, one, two, three, four, five. And the next year they found out, oh, we have another year, but we, we start with one. And then they had the, the, the idea to, to, put, to add the year designation at the end. So it's one A for the first year, one B for the second year, and so on. Uh, for the computer it's a little problem. And also in this program they put it on the right side so you could never really sort the things. And here also you had to, you could only look for the numbers but, but for nothing else. And we had the funniest days when Sylvie uh, mistyped and it, he entered something but he didn't know how, what, how it's called. He couldn't find it anymore. Uh, unfortunately we could manage to get an XML export so I could export the XML look through the file, find it, how it's now really named, and then we could go back to it and he could change it. So it was a bit difficult, but he loved it. And until his last day he said, if you force me to change the program, I will quit. So we never changed anything. <laughs> we run into other problems. For instance, we have here the KP numbers, the Kyle Penal, and uh, here the, the colleagues are uh, a bit uh, advanced, they put KP05 for 2005 in front. Yeah, but the program didn't like that because it filled all the fronts with zeros. So once you put the zero in, the, the zero of the text was not left. Okay, so I had to implement some trick and then with the, with the, with the sharp in front it worked again. Other things were things like, ah, now you can see, cannot see it here on the, on the top, uh, some strange sign, foreign signs. We could have always to find some trick to write it. It was not able to write uh, um, to to write um, um, uh, Unicode. I mean, the the title was able, but his his database behind didn't like that. All right, so we had, we we just made some tricks, and so it's uh, that's the the the, the time of um, constant struggling. You, you buy a book about Unicode or XML and most, a, lot, a lot of what is written there is wrong and doesn't work. So it was really a pioneering time, I can tell you. At the same time, um, uh, the, the Hattusa texts were uh, declared memory of the world, uh, or were entered in the mem memory of the world register in 2001, in September. We were already, already working on some online, um, yes, and then we started with the Hattitul portal in 2002, somewhere in spring. Um, you can maybe find it still on Twitter. All right, um, 
and there uh, he we came up with the first version. The, the, the 04 was published then, and it looked uh, the results looked like this. You could look and you could you could search for all fields, yeah, for inventory numbers, publications, the affiliation to uh, CTH, and things like that. And did I start? Okay. Um, and in 2005, then we published as books in five volumes the Concordance um, at, at, at this stage. It was completed in a way, but still changing because you have always some joints. So with different registers and everything. Another project of Silvin was the uh, catalogue de texte dicte. It was, uh, if, if you are a chartologist, you know it, a catalogue or kind a, a way to organize uh, or to, um, to to catalogue the Hittite texts by categories belonging to histor historical texts, uh, letters, uh, um, rituals, and so on, and. Uh, um, of course, here also uh, changes were going on. Some groups uh, were added or had to be added and so on. That's why he, Sylvain and I continued to do this book, whereas I must say I mainly did uh, technical things in it and he was, uh, he was much closer to the text and it was his daily work to sit, read the new literature and enter it into the database. Here, uh, uh, could have been looking better. In, 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 in nature, online it looks better. Sorry. Um, here you can see what you find in the concordance. Sometimes Sylvian received letters out oh, the, the photo in the, uh, the photograph of a text in the concordance is upside down. Well, it was not his fault, it was my fault. At least I was responsible because I, 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 did, I organized a lot of the things in the back, but um, the concordance became the backbone of the complete uh, website, because everything is interconnected with this. And uh, for instance, here you see the 1A, and then you see the symbol, this means that we have uh, one of these sketches for this text, yeah, to show we, how the pieces belong together. And the second is, uh, um, which was, I think, in a different, no, yeah, here, well, here you see, these are, this is the old earlier stage from 2005, they are grey. It means we don't have a, a picture, uh, photograph, not yet. At this time, uh, we don't uh, ask the database if we have a picture, because we usually have one. It's so rather exception. We don't work unnecessary work, uh, make uh, work unnecessarily uh, in the, 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 the server, the web server. All right. Next one is the publication. Here's the publication number. Kai Schrift text of Borsky, so and so. As long as we have the permission to publish them online, we cut them the, the earlier volumes, and you can directly click here to get um, the. Uh, the, um, um, uh, the, the copy of the text. The next one, maybe you don't know what uh, CTH471 is, you click here and then the, the window opens and tells you what, what, uh, to what, what this groups, uh, group means. And uh, here the, there are the, the, uh, the, the, the fine spot, the first part is the declaration of the fine spot, the letter, the other part, the second part in, in, um, in black comes from the fine journals. It was funny, sometimes we got, we received letters, yeah, please, there is a mistake, uh, a misspelling or mistake in the fine journal. <coughs> no, it was, yeah, no, in, in the concordance. And then we had to tell people, no, it's not in the concordance, this is from the fine journal, you want to record the fine journal. So it, it stays there still. Maybe we have a comment then in the Anmerkungen. And in the Anmerkungen, uh, Sylvian collect, collected all literature 
the joints. You can see here these colors. You can click to search for these uh, numbers like uh, publication numbers or uh, find spot numbers and so on. And he collected all the, uh, uh, the, the literature he came across, everything he found interesting. And uh, as you see, we have here, and this is the new version, um, we decided to keep the, 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 the um, anmerkungen, um, the notes of Silvin Kosha in the way it was done. We do not have at the moment any capacity to continue with the, with the anmerkung in the old scale, so we have separated it. But uh, we wanted to keep it because sometimes things change and it should be uh, there. Um, you see here under Vergleiche, VGL, uh, growing bit, and these are the references Sylvie entered. The problem became in some cases that came up that um, there were many references, and, we, and if you were, were, were looking for something like uh, religious, religious uh, matter, then you could, could end up with something, some uh, remarks on uh, the script. And we discussed several times if we could make something to classify these, uh, uh, these entries, but uh, it turned out that it's not so easy. Because often, you know, you have a mixture of different things and then everything becomes very complicated. So, use it or leave it. So, that was his idea, but he thought he should um, tell it to the people. And here you see one uh, column which is new. Selim did not see it anymore because it was only invented, uh, it was only installed uh, this year. Uh, here you can click and if you are lucky you get a transliteration of the text. So I think, ah yes, yeah, sometimes here for instance there is a, is a link uh, to a publication of the whole uh, composition of this uh, 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 purification feature. We, the links do not uh, work on this page. Um, I just go quickly through the different things which I just uh, mentioned in the links. One is these uh, John skits, uh, sketches which uh, here, uh, what I open is his tool. First, he, said he, he had to redraw all these things, and it became more and more difficult to keep up with these drawing things. So I, I proposed we digitize it. And uh, so we made, uh, with ray trace, we made uh, uh, um, um, uh, scalable vector graphics, which were then a bit cleaned and repaired by some students. And then you have, you see here, layout uh, and other and steuer elemental mass in the schizze, different levels. Uh, so you could take a photograph, uh, push it to the right size, put it underneath and in, and in layout, and then draw and then join it, the photograph, and then draw the join. That was much easier, and immediately we had the new uh, join sketch. The, they, are now, they are then exported, and what you have seen before, uh, uh, you can see it there. The, the advantage of the electronic version is that you can also connect it with the database. So, if the, uh, usually you see here numbers which uh, the insiders can recognize as, as the inventory numbers. But when you work with something, you need the publication numbers because you can't find the, them in the publication. So, the two ways you can take the number, enter the concordance to find the uh, publication, or what we then did, connect it to the concordance, and you, with mouse over, you can see what, where the publication is. And if you click, you come to photographs, and, 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 and. So this is the advantage of the, of the, uh, of the yeah, of, the, of these links which frightened me so at the beginning, in the 90s. And here, this is one of the clicks, uh, you come to the Mainzer photo archive, and there, in, on the first page, I will not go any deeper, you get the, the collection of photographs which we have for a certain text. And then you see, we have now two ways to use it, either with a mouse, 
or the other one, if you, if you look on the telephone or on the tablet, you better use the other uh, button. Yeah, and then I, I showed you the orthography, this is, looks like this, um, the link. Another thing we had, I thought that it was not on, the, on this page maybe, one link maybe you have seen is something like 3D, that leads you to this if you are lucky. There are still some missing, but uh, we, are, we, are, we are improving, we will have more. We have now probably more than 3,000 uh, fragments in 3D, uh, but they are not yet online. I, I'm not such a good bureaucrat as, as uh, Sylvian, but I'm, I'm trying to follow his footsteps. <laughs> Uh, then this, and uh, you, the good thing about it, you can, uh, you can turn it, you can take pictures of it, you can measure on it, you can uh, even change the lighting. So you have, the, the, you have a lot of the possibilities which you find in the museum when you take a tablet in the hand. Alright, here is one of the examples you see on the, the, the you, you, you measure you are in, the, in, the, in the museum and try to read the text. Um, it's not completely deciphered, but I would say from what I see that uh, you can read more than you have on the publication. The publication was done first. It had a, it had a, um, a, a, how do you say, when you, a collation, but it was before we did the 3D scan, and you can see here that. Uh, in the upper part, it's the normal view, and the lower part is some enhancement, which shows you more about the depth of the tablet. So you can see more, and if you have some idea of what the text could be, uh, and you take some time, you, I think you can uh, reconstruct more of the text. And on the lower, lower left, you see something which can be, um, lazy people use as the basis of a copy. You take the 3D and just take this, a representation which shows you more or less what you would uh, draw in a in a one of these copies. Okay, other things we did and connected are the uh, are what I showed as a link in the in the Anmerkungen, uh, the uh, editions of texts. And as you can see here, many of them have um, have many fragments and several exemplars, A and B and so on. So, uh, and then you can, and we, we, uh, this is also, uh, then can be presented from one file in different ways, like here in a, in a um, party tour. Uh, here is the translation, can also look separate, but it's in a separate file. Or you can have it in the exemplar. What we decided 20 years ago, and that was a new idea, we organize all the text according to the sentence. Each, each line here is a sentence. Yeah? And not like before, a main text, and all the others are then put underneath. So if you have a, have a, if you have a party tour with several exemplars, it's all under, under, under each other um, um, with the, um, in, in a central structure. So you can directly compare the sentence or cola. All right, this is the exemplar view, and of course you can then get this uh, uh, bound transcription out of it, which is nice to read and compare with the, you know, to improve your skills in Hittite with the translation. Maybe this is a good thing to read. All right, uh, another thing which came now up, bit, yeah, um, I think this is a wrong, in the wrong place, but it doesn't matter. Um, this is one of the, I know, this is what I said, the new column. You click there and you end up in our thesaurus. What we try to do is to get these boxes into the internet. We are quite far now with it. It's about one million file cards which were collected over the years and Sylvie Kosha got also to do his duty on that. And uh, now we try to replace it, and you can search in it. We, you can already search even in cuneiform. You don't have to write the cuneiform. I didn't take the, uh, the example here, but for instance, if you have a gestin, 
which is why they can also be read V5 and you do not remember. You have just a broken piece with three signs with a gestin in it and you have no clue what it could be. You, you just use the cuneiform search models and then you can find uh, everything which is with this sign. And usually it's uh, marked where the things are fine. Also with combination and so on. Yeah, and as I said, the prospects. One of the things I have to do is to publish this big one. The whole box is full of the last version of the um, of the uh, sketches who Sigmund did that is at his 80th birthday um, and I hope next year with the accompanying other volumes we will finish that. Another thing we are doing is uh, examining, this is also an older work, we are examining the um, the, uh, Kunev, the 3D tablets and try to find uh, uh, script uh, um, as a uh, merkmal um, give their characteristics yeah uh, we can with the, the we can then measure the sing, single imprints and if you you can put them together in tables the, the, the characters which you can see on the right on the right side the angles lengths and all these kinds of depths all, all this single of single uh, imprints, uh, wedge imprints on the left side, and if you combine them to to the sign shape, you put it in table, then you can compare it and find out uh, uh, different scribes. Like here, you see, this is very nice and just uh, sign for Dingir, and with only a few signs, you can manage to uh, discern different scribes. We, we uh, it's. It has some some pitfalls, but basically it works, and we do want to do it on a, a large scale. The problem is you have to collect all these pieces and bits. That's why we started um, um, searching for the signs on the tablets and on photographs. Um, and it's basically like this. Here I was searching for a, a, a gi, and then I marked on this tablet and Anna, and it says me that the Anna is about 40% looking like a Gi. So it's not a Gi, I think, it's already wet, if you can follow me. So, but um, the idea is that, for instance, when you want to compare to a text that in the hopefully near future, when the program which is collapsing uh, the last weeks, unfortunately, um, when it properly works, that you get lists of uh, signs you want to see in different uh, in columns of different texts, and you see immediately, yeah, looks the same or looks different. Uh, and we want to go further with uh, with uh, artificial uh, intelligence to find. Uh, I mean, here we use also machine learning and artificial intelligence already. But maybe it goes further so that you know we get then a catalog of all the stripes and so on, the, the forms, sign form they use. It's a dream. I, I started uh, in 1999 with 3D and it took me 10 years to get really a, a countable number. And uh, Sylvian was always excited of new things and uh, he was always waking, uh, waiting for new things to come. It's a pity that. He who loved so much to 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 work on the text uh, to date texts that he, he did not anymore uh, uh, see uh, the results which still are not working. <laughs> but I hope soon. So and the new thing and I think that we have really carefully to observe this is uh, the the artificial intelligence in the in the way of. Uh, no, it's time to get finished, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I entered a text which we need tomorrow here in the, in the performance of, of Iloyanka, and I asked, uh, for instance, ChatGPT if it understands uh, Hittite, 
And he did say, well, I'm not so sure, but uh, you can ask me. And uh, so I tried, and uh, on the left side you see the proper translation, it's after Elizabeth Reek and that Ali uh, translation uh, in, in, on the Concordance, uh, but I, I quickly translated into English. And you see the translation in the middle looks a bit different. Um, it's, then it, he doesn't it understand so much. Okay, so maybe he does not like this, uh, um, the, the syllabic transliteration, so I tried it with a uh, bound transcription. He said more, but it, it's looking, um, the result is still a far, a, a far from, from the right thing. And then I tried it again, and then the, the program became a bit nervous. Um, because it starts to repeat and it's, um, it's saying things like it's talking about a thousand sheep, it's never nowhere in the text, and then I ask, well, where do we get the thousand sheep from? And then uh, I make this a bit shorter. Um, yes, I asked, uh, please translate uh, uh, what is 20 sheep? And he translated, and 20 sheep in Hittite is according to Chat GPT, Duk Palchash, Kaskalma. Okay. And I said, what is then the 10,000 sheep? Duk Palfas Mesh, Shesh, Shesh, Shesh. And the 1,000 uh, is a bit shorter, so the Mesh, Shesh. So it's complete nonsense. <laughs> okay, so we, we don't get very far. Then I found out that there's this new part of Google. And there are, uh, can you translate? Uh, yeah, yes, I can translate 26 languages. Okay, um, can you also in, uh, Hittite? Um, yes, I can tr translate Hittite and from English and into. So, all right, we try. I gave him the same text, and uh, sure, here's a translation of the Hittite text. And then, instructions for the priest of the sun god in Eri. It's not in the text, yeah. Prologue, but it's very well structured. Prologue, procedure of the festival, sacrifice, prophet, the trial, the feast, the conclusion. And always filled with some text. So this is proposal one. Okay, we have the second proposal. Um, it's also quite, it, it ends up with uh, somebody, uh, it's, uh, it's funny to read, but we don't have the time anymore. Um, and the third proposal ends with um, the, the wife of the sun god uh, is anointed with oil and his wife is washed with water and the sun god's wife undergoes a festival of Poli and the sun god's wife eats all the food and the sun god's wife drinks all the beer and the sun god's wife dances all night and the sun god's wife is the queen of the gods and so on and the sun god is pleased, the end. So, okay, um, you should not show up with that <laughs> in that exam, probably. Um, then, uh, I was annoyed by, when I was using Skype, uh, Bing, uh, Bing's sometimes I said, I'm here, can I help you? They say, maybe you can help me translate the text uh, I'm sorry, I cannot translate it. Uh, he was, uh, he was uh, frank with that. But at least it, uh, he gets some recommendations where we could, uh, um, where we could find some uh, things. And in, in number two is headport on and the catalog of Hita texts. So we may, might find something there. All right. Um, now the conclusion. I should took look, uh, have a look in the notes. Now we have, we, we face a lot of changes now, we see it's not yet, and maybe it's a bit unfair that I also only talk with the chat, because there are uh, possibilities to program these artificial intelligence on the website. I didn't have much time to check this, but there's something more, maybe worth uh, to, to study for not only the specialists, but after some time for students. And uh, I did also not use the, 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 the newest version. Um, but, uh, sorry. Yeah. Maybe we get uh, better results with that. But the changes already began. For instance, a Czech, uh, a Czech University in Prague, Technical University, decided last week, or at the beginning of December, uh, to stop. Uh, um, um, asking for uh, or let write bachelor thesis because it not, makes no sense to correct uh, bachelor uh, theses which anyway come from the machine and they decided rather to have uh, chats with the students 
Uh, so this is one of the first results. Um, so we have to learn to manage these uh, machine uh, methods to be able to to yeah to keep control of what is outputted and to control and to check what what we what we can, can believe. Um, there and we should not forget um, the, 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 these chatbots might be manipulated even, but sometimes they are also manipulated by the way we ask them. Which, as you know from every uh, um, communication uh, that that can happen. One of the board members of OpenAI, which made this chatbot, is he's a trained historian. He is very uh, uh, he is very hopeful, or he is convinced that in the near future we can do everything with these bots. Um, and an artificial intelligence expert, who, on the other hand, a professor of computer science uh, who deals with the, the, steer, the automatic driver of cars, says, well, we will probably not, not drive fully automatic in the next 50 years. So there's still uh, quite a difference in, in the, in the, um, yeah, in the, in the way people uh, trust in these methods. Anyhow, we should pre be prepared. And one thing is for sure, uh, a personality like Sylvain Koshak, uh, with his humanity and his, uh, his uh, friendliness and, uh, and his humor, can never be replaced by this chat GPT and other artificial intelligence. Thank you for your patience. <laughs>